Just move it. Ah! What was that? I'm scared. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Hiya, I'm Hana Q, a digital artist. Recently, I've become obsessed with Ibis Paint X, a free art app that you can use on your phone or tablet. One thing that is pretty cool about Ibis Paint is that they have an official YouTube channel where they share tutorials and tips for using the app. I thought it would be a fun idea to go and try some of these tutorials out and see if they actually work. But as you might predict from the title and intro, some of these got a little, well, let's say interesting. I'm also going to be doing a whole new drawing using all the tutorials, so how about we go and get started? So here I am opening the app. I've actually done two whole drawings in Ibis Paint now, so I definitely think I'm getting quite familiar with the app. Let's make a new canvas by pressing here. I keep things simple and I always use a canvas this size of 2000 pixels by 2500 pixels. This ratio works well for posting your art on most media sites. I hit OK, and now it's time to start sketching. Oh, but first, we can't forget to watch our daily ad before we can start using our favorite brushes. I'm going to use the pen fade brush for my sketch. It's a good little soldier of a brush that lets me pack on more weight as I keep the opacity low. Today, I'm drawing Sakura and Miku to celebrate Hanami season. Since the cold winter is coming to an end and spring is making its way into the world with their arrival of the warm sun, flowers, and birds. It's definitely one of my favorite times, and just the other day, I was so happy to see the bees are back, fluttering about. As I'm sketching, this is a good time to check out our first tutorial from Ibis Paint, so let's go give it a watch. Oh my, okay. Uh-huh. Alright, draw the mouth. Oh no! It's not in the right place. Oh, the reference window. I love the reference window. Mm -hmm. It's very true. Okay. <laughs> it's cute. So I love the reference window. And all you gotta do to summon it is to hit the bottom right button here, go to settings, and simply turn on the tab for reference window. Afterwards, you can move it around, resize it, and even add your own reference images. I love this function, and I've already given it a brownie point before, but I'm going to give it another brownie point because it really is just that good. And I think everyone should be using it. I'm going to keep working on the sketch now. I've had this idea of drawing Sakura and Miku since the last time I drew Miku, and I definitely wanted to make her a little bit more whimsy and fun. So, I drew a pose where she's playing with her hair and chewing some bubblegum while giving you, the viewer, a cheeky wink. And now our sketch is complete, which means it is now time to head into doing the line art. When I line, I like to use the pencil graphite brush. I felt like it had the most similar feel to one of my favorite brushes to use on Clip Studio Paint, which is the dense watercolor brush. Um, but someone informed me that the reason I have been struggling with the magic wand tool and the bucket tool is because of this specific brush's properties, which made me a little sad. Um, I'm still gonna use it and just suffer, I guess. But now I'm gonna look into other brushes to line with in the future. Personally, I like to use mostly default brushes so that my videos are more accessible. So while I appreciate everyone recommending me custom brushes, I would love for you all to suggest me some default ones that you like. So for Sakura Miku's design, I followed the original one, I think. I did make her frills on her shirt petals instead because I felt that would be on brand. Y'all know I always gotta make sure to include my wild Hanaku hair, and then I also added a little bubblegum for her to chew. Because why not? It's cute. The line art is all finished, which actually is a great segue into our next Ibis Paint tutorial. Okay, we're doing some line art. Very pretty. Yay! Ah! Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh no! Ah! <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Uh -huh. <gasps> oh my gosh! Is this real? Does that really work? Okay, let's see if it works. 
Alright, so obviously I drew my sketch and line art separately, but let's just merge it together for all intents and purposes. I noticed that they used a colored sketch in theirs, so I'm gonna do one where the sketch is just light gray and also light blue to test both. And now I merged them together, which is really scary. I would feel so devastated if I accidentally merged my line art and sketch together. Now the tutorial says to make a new layer and put the blend mode on divide. Then you select the color of the sketch, fill it in the divide layer, I did this for both the gray sketch and blue sketch, and it's a little hard to see, but it actually removed most of the sketch. Now the tutorial mentions to duplicate this layer twice, and I can confirm that yes, you do have to do it twice or else it won't remove all of the sketch. Now you go here, press add layer from canvas, and you've got your line art, but you do want to also hit these three dots and click clear white to remove the white background so you can color underneath. Or you can put the blend mode to multiply which should also work. One effect that occurred is that with my specific line art, it did make the line art thinner. And with the blue sketch, you can see it washed out some of the line art. But to be honest, I think I like the thinner line art better. So this tutorial also has an unintended extra perk of thinning out your line art if you like this look better. I'm going to keep my old line art, but this is a really cool tip to know if you accidentally line on the same layer as your sketch or accidentally merge layers. It definitely works and it deserves a brownie point because it could save your life one day. Now, my line art is not exactly the cleanest on the block. I have stray lines everywhere because I tend to like lining in many layers to keep the hair, face, clothes, everything separate. You can imagine how tedious it would be if I had to go through each layer individually to clean up. Well, this next Ibis paint tutorial has a solution for just that, so let's give it a watch. Yahoo! ゴミがいっぱいだ。ああ、みごもてきすがいいじゃん。ああ。あ、ま、あれ、その <laughs> I have to try that, okay? Alright, so the tutorial says to go to this special tool, hit the cog wheel, then select lasso eraser, then you turn on this button, erase all layers, and now you should be able to use it just like the normal lasso erase tool, but it will apply to all your layers. And oh my goodness, yes! It works. I am so happy that it does. This will save me so much time scrolling through my layers, and it's clean and effective. I love it. So simple, so useful. 10 out of 10, this tutorial deserves a brownie point. Thank you, Ibis Paint. We're now ready to shade our piece, but before we get to that, I wanted to take a quick break to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an intuitive, all-in-one website platform that allows you to do it all. From building your own website, a blog to share your latest news, to an online store where you can sell your products. I have been enjoying Squarespace so far and I think it's the perfect place to start your own art portfolio or membership site to share tutorials and more. Express checkout mode. When you have a single product you're selling, streamline the process by allowing customers to bypass the shopping cart and jump straight into checkout. Banners and promotions. Having a sale soon or need to highlight holiday hours? You can easily do so using Squarespace's intuitive banners and promotions. Mailing lists. You can seamlessly collect unlimited email subscribers through promotional pop-ups on Squarespace. There's even a variety of different styles you can choose from. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash hanaq to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now, back to the video. All right, it's time to add base colors. Have you ever had the issue of trying to color, but you can barely make out where your color is supposed to go because you can't distinguish it from the background? Well, this next tutorial is for you. Ooh, base color time. Wow. Yeah, it can be hard to see the skin color against white, especially if you use like a light color. Oh. <laughs> what just happened? A pretty solid way, I think, putting your base colors in. I love this 
person's voice. It's so cute. So let's select the selection layer, then grab the bucket tool. Now we're going to select all the areas outside. My line art isn't perfect, so I often have to go in with a brush to close up gaps, then fill it in. Once that's done, I go and reverse the selection and add in my base color. I like to use a mid gray because I feel like I can see things a lot clearer that way. Now we can create new layers and clip it to the base layer, so we don't color outside the lines. I do like this tip, but I wouldn't say that it is that revolutionary. I'm sure a lot of you already know about it by now, and I just haven't found my favorite way to base color in Ibis Paint yet, so no brownie point, but I will show you guys some additional steps I like to do in my base coloring process. So I like to make a folder, which will contain all my base colors, and clip that to the gray base layer. I make a new layer for each different color I add, and I fill it in using the selection layer and bucket tool. Sometimes I just use the bucket tool by itself. One final step is I like to then make folders to group each base coloring section. This is going to come in handy later when we shade, so just trust me. I like to have a separate folder for the skin, hair, clothes, accessories, and just whatever I feel like should be grouped. And now we have our base colors cleanly arranged. Some of the shading I did on stream a few weeks ago will be public a week after this video releases, but I'll briefly go over what I did while coloring. I like to add a warm tone on a new layer, clip to the base layer, to the cheeks, lips, nose, and other areas. Then I create a new layer, clip to the skin folder, and set it to multiply. Here I use the lasso tool to create my selection. I'll brush in the shading color and essentially create the lighting. Afterwards, I'll make a new layer, clip this to the skin folder as well, and set it to overlay. Then I'll set the opposite area of the shading and fill in a lighting color. I want the light here to be bright. Then I create another overlay layer, again clip to the skin folder, and create a red band of glow between the area where the shadow and light hit. You can learn a little bit more about this effect in my latest this video where I talk about subsurface light scattering. Then I just repeat this same process to the hair. All right, if you're new to digital art, you might be wondering what in the heck is a multiply and overlay? Well, these are called blend modes, but let's let Ibis Paint explain it in this next tutorial video. What is this? Hi. Oh my, is it a song? Okay, multiply for shadows, green for unifying. Oh, add for sparkle. That's pretty catchy. Honestly, this is quite a catchy song, and I'd have to say their descriptions of each blend mode is pretty accurate. I'm gonna give it a brownie point because it is fun and accurate. I'm going to explain to you how I use blend modes. I like to use multiply for shadows, overlay is good for lighting specific colors, and add is great for creating a really strong lighting. And I personally like to use screen for atmospheric perspective, which is a coloring process of receding background objects into the background color. So I have my folders that group certain base colors together, like the hair, skin, clothes, and accessories. Then I like to create a multiply layer for the shadow using the lasso tool and filling it in. Make sure it's clipped. I make another layer and set it to overlay and select the opposite area and fill it in with a lighting color. Now you can see I've created a strong lighting coming from the right on the hair. What I then like to do is add a new layer on screen to create the atmospheric perspective on the hairs that are further in the background. My background is this light blue, so I'll make it light blue. And that's a general overview of how I like to use the blend modes. It makes adding lighting really simple and it's very easy. Once I have all the lighting and shading in place, I like to go back into the base color folders and make a new layer clip to the base color layers to add my detail shading. For the hair, I like to do the zigzag pattern and now I repeat that whole process of adding the shading, lighting, and then the detail coloring to all the other parts of the character like the clothes, accessories, and more. And then I'll just finish up the details and the eyes. the coloring is all finished. I think she's coming out pretty cute so far, but now it's time to do the background. All right, for the background, nothing complex. I think I just want to do a bright blue sky with maybe some sakura trees. So let's see what kind of tutorial Ibis Paint has for us for that. Okay, so this is cloud, cloud coloring. So we make some hard brush. 
You draw out some clouds and you smudge it out. It seems easy enough. Okay, so first thing we do is make a gradient. Then I'll use a hard brush to make the outlines of the clouds. And now, supposedly, all we need to do is use the smudge tool. But, um, it's coming out interesting. This seemed a lot easier somehow in the video. Let's see if I can get any further with this. So this is where I am with this. And honestly, I frankly suck at drawing these clouds and I cannot be bothered to do them any better because they're mostly going to be covered anyways. So I can't give a brownie point for this tip, but at no fault of the tutorial, I am just very lazy and very tired from rendering all day. I am sorry. But I will say that I just added some quick branches and some sakura flowers from the free image material section, a little quick blur, and it's seamlessly fitting into the background. And now our background is finished. Let's move on to my favorite part of drawing, adding the special effects. So before we do any special effects, I've been wanting to try out this Ibis paint tutorial for forever, so let's give it a look. This is so high octane. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's see how this goes. Make a new selection for the eye white. Mm -hmm. Just move it. Ah! What was that? I'm scared. I am so deeply disturbed by this tutorial, but I am going to do it because curiosity is just killing me. So firstly, we are going to make a selection of the eyeball and select add layer from new canvas to copy it into a new layer. Then we're going to make a selection of the eye white and add that to a new layer. Next, we're going to reorder the layers. So it's drawing, eyeball, then eye white. Now on the eye white layer, we're going to fill it out so it's completely white. And for me, I'm also going to fill out the eyeball too, so it's not missing any edges. And well, we've done it. <laughs> the singular moving eyeball, which is completely not creepy at all. I mean, it works, but does it deserve a brownie point? I don't know. Maybe. No, I can't. It's too much. So as you can see, I already added a bunch of layer effects to my drawing. I'd like to go into my techniques with this someday, but my biggest personal tip for y'all is to make a new layer from canvas, add the posterize effect, then blur it with the Gaussian blur, and set it to a soft light and mess with the opacity. I like to do this effect as a free way to kind of simulate the curves tool effect. Now we're ready to watch our final Ibis paint tutorial. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <gasps> oh my god! Is it rainbow? Little sparkles? <gasps> oh. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. This is very creative. I would have never thought to do this. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! Wow, it's like little rainbow particles. That's so cute! Oh. oh my god, I am so excited to try this out. So firstly, let's make a new layer. Then let's add the parallel gradation effect. I'm going to select a rainbow for my gradient. Then I'll mess with how I want the lines to look. Now you're going to want to add a new layer below that and set it to add blend mode. Now clip the gradient layer to that layer. Return to the add layer and add the rain effect. And oh my god! Gosh, there's rainbow rain. I'm going to mess with my effects so that it looks more like light sparkles and it's turning out so nice. Look at this animation effect. That's so pretty. I'm going to turn off the animation so it's still by making the speed zero. This effect is amazing. I love it so much. It deserves all the brownie points. You guys really need to try this effect and I can imagine so many different ways to use it. And with that, the art is finally complete. So I'm going to let you guys go on and enjoy the final reveal now.
I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. This one was a little bit different, but I had a lot of fun trying out the Ibis paint tutorials. They are so creative and fun. I'm so going to do more of them in the future. And here are more lovely fan arts done by the community. Thank you oh so much. You are also very fabulous. Love you guys. And until next time, I'm wishing you all the best on your journeys of achieving your goals and dreams. Bye.